Welcome, everyone, to the last station of our prayer journey throughout Good Friday today. For those who joined me at 6 this morning and have done vigil with me throughout the day, well done. I'm proud of you. You'll have special jewels in your crown in heaven, I think. Uh, we have talked today about various aspects of the story of Jesus' last day. We've talked about the sorrow that was heavy over the disciples. We've talked about betrayal that Jesus experienced. We've talked about the rebellion of a culture that wanted to bend Jesus to their will. And lastly, we talked about the bedlam, the other utter anarchy that was in place, and how Jesus, in the midst of that, spoke peaceful words of forgiveness and grace and surrender. And so now we come to the fifth and the final story and the theme that I want to look at on this Good Friday. And it is the theme of courage. We know that Jesus is dead. He has committed his spirit to his Father. He has breathed his last. His work of sacrifice has been completed. The work that would save the world from its sins. And as it happened, the whole of creation seemed to convulse in response to this outrage. The sun stopped shining. We are told that the earthquake struck the region. Uh, caves, uh, graves were thrown open. And the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. All of creation is convulsed in response to the death of its creator. And the spectators, we are told, who had come to be entertained as if it were a carnival sideshow, ended up fleeing to their homes, beating their breasts in repentance and terror over the huge mistake they had just been witness to, and perhaps even party to. So let us conclude our journey through this day of Good Friday as we listen to the last words in Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 49. And all Jesus' acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. And on the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Has there ever been a time in human history of greater pathos than this? Jesus Christ, Jesus the Nazarene, who is the light of the world, the water of life, the way, the truth, and the life, the Lord of all creation. He was hanging there, dead, spiked to a cross abandoned. Where were the adoring crowds who had hung on his every word? Where were his disciples? Luke mentions that his acquaintances stood at a distance. Maybe his disciples were among them. That's the only hint in the Gospels is that they might have been there except for John. But even if some of his disciples were those acquaintances, those who knew him, as the Greek says, they, they still stood afar. They were a long way off because they were terrified. They didn't want to end up as Jesus had ended up, the, the one who was hanging there, dead, abandoned, pierced. It is a painful and grievous thing that none of the 11 male disciples came true for their Lord in this moment. But he wasn't utterly abandoned. There was another. His name was Joseph. 
of the town of Arimathea. He was a man of great courage. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious council, but he refused to go along with the sham of a trial against Jesus. How courageous was that? To be the one voice that says no against the mob that is crying for blood. But his courage didn't stop there. After Jesus died, Joseph probably took a deep breath and, and went before Pilate, requested an audience before Pilate. He asked for the body of Jesus so that he might bury him in his own family tomb. Normally, criminals who had been crucified were pulled down from the cross and tossed on a burn pile. The flames would take care of whatever the dogs and rats and crows left behind. But this was an unimaginable end to Jesus as far as Joseph was concerned. And so at great risk to his rep reputation and perhaps even to his own life, he stepped forward to provide one last act of honor for his beloved rabbi. What courage. And Joseph wasn't alone. The women who were mentioned earlier, they were there too. Those brave women. They see where Jesus is laid. They returned to prepare his body for burial with some spices and ornaments. I so admire the courage of these few, these brave, brave women, who would be honored by being the first witnesses to the resurrection. And this brave man, Joseph of Arimathea. Jesus began his life under the care of an earthly father named Joseph, who never spoke a word in scripture, but who listened to God and did every brave thing required of him in order to protect his son, the son of God. And Jesus ended his life in the care of another brave Joseph, did speak, who spoke out against an unjust trial, who spoke bravely to power in order that Jesus might be honored in death. His name will be forever lauded for this act of courage. We live in a season that requires courage of Christ followers. It is increasingly dangerous to believe and to follow what the Bible teaches us in the face of a culture that calls those beliefs hateful and bigoted. It is increasingly dangerous to speak for Jesus in the face of a culture that derides Christians and calls our master a racist. It is increasingly dangerous to stand for your Christian values and principles in a workplace that punishes those who do. It is a dangerous place out there and God is calling us to be courageous. Courageous, faithful, outspoken, unwavering, principled, spirit-filled followers of Jesus. And so as we conclude this day of prayer vigil, I invite you to join me in praying that God will imbue us, his people, with the courage of his son, Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your admonition to us throughout your word to be courageous, to not be afraid. When Joshua spoke to his people, he said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isaiah spoke such words to us. He said, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And Paul, writing to Timothy, reminded the young man that God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. And so, Jesus, in these crazy times, in this uncertain world where up is down and right is wrong, we 
pray that you would deliver us from the grip of fear. From the fear of a virus, from the fear of illness, from the fear of death, from fear of politics, from fear of our financial futures. There are so many ways that we can be afraid, so many ways that we can be cowardly. We ask instead that you would imbue us with the, the courage of Jesus Christ, the courage that you gave to Joseph, the courage that you gave to those women. May that courage be found in increasing amounts in the hearts of your people here. Make us brave. Make us brave to speak truth. Make us brave to stand up against bullies. Make us brave to proclaim and defend the honor of Christ, to protect our families, to protect our community. Fill us with the spirit of Jesus, who, terrified though he might have been, finished his journey to the cross and to the grave so that the power of sin and death and fear might be broken. Make us brave, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now as you prepare for the evening and to take your rest, I would love to pronounce a benediction over you. Why don't you raise your hands and receive this as a gift from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his perfect peace, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen.